In a throwback to 8 November 2016, the Reserve Bank of India announced on Friday evening the withdrawal of currency notes of rupees 2000 denomination effective September 30. The central bank said it did not print the 2000 rupee currency note in the last four years. And the bank notes are now reaching the end of their four to five year lifespan. Is what the RBI has done a painful reminder of the ghost of the 2016 demonetization experience when many died waiting in queues to exchange their currency notes at banks? Students could not get admission, people could not seek treatment in hospitals, and the consequences were especially disastrous for small and micro businesses. According to news reports on Saturday, about 89% of the 2000 denomination banknotes were issued prior to March 2017. Their total value declined from 6.73 lakh crore rupees on March 31, 2018 to Rs 3.62 lakh crore or just about 10.8% of all banknotes. There's also a view that there will not be similar hardships now as there were in 2016. But let us go over to Professor Arun Kumar, a noted expert on the black economy in India, which is also the title of his immensely popular book on the subject. Let's ask him what he thinks will be the effect of this new withdrawal of rupees 2000 notes. Professor Arun Kumar, thank you very much for joining us. You know, can we begin by what the government achieved by introducing these notes of 2000 rupee denomination and now what it has achieved by withdrawing them? So, you know, these 2000 rupee notes were introduced because we needed higher denomination currency notes to ease circulation in the economy. You know, the RBI had asked in 2015 the Ministry of Finance, ki whether we can issue 2,000, 5,000 and 10,000 rupee notes. The Ministry of Finance did not agree for 5,000 and 10,000 rupee notes, but agrees to 2,000 rupee notes. So therefore, the plan was to introduce these notes because circulation required more notes. 1,000 rupee notes had been introduced about 15 years earlier. They were inadequate to doing transactions. You know, as the economy expands and the inflation takes place, more and more transactions take place, more and more <clears throat> money is required for circulation. So that was the reason. So in fact, the logic was not that uh, <clears throat> 2000 rupee notes were introduced because of demonetization. Demonetization was done because 2000 rupee notes were going to be available from November. So the logic was the opposite of what is being given out now. <clears throat> so 2000 rupee notes were required for uh, circulation in the economy because the economy had become much larger. Now what the government is saying is these 2000 rupee notes are not needed, you know, which is not the case, which was not the original logic. And they're saying we are withdrawing them because now they're not serving the purpose, but they are serving the purpose of transactions, you know, and you've st actually started withdrawing them. So their availability has gone down. And that's why whatever 2000 rupee notes are available, they are being used actually for a variety of reasons. One is the households need money for uh, precautionary motive. You may have an illness, you may have some other. So it's not that the average family will hold large amount of these notes, but maybe the one crore, the top, you know, uh, percent, three percent of the families, they need it for various precautionary purposes. They may hold two, three, four lakhs of rupees of cash at home, of which half or three quarters of which may be in 2000 rupee notes. Then there are businesses, they need it for working capital, especially the small businesses, the micro businesses, and there are more than six crore of them. Then farmers, their savings may be held in uh, partly in this 2000 rupee notes, and there are 11 crore of them. So basically, large percentage of these 2000 rupee notes are held either by small businesses or by farmers or by <clears throat> well-off families as transaction motive, as precautionary motive. Now, what may be hoarded as black wealth? And that is what, you know, the government fears that large number of people are holding these 2000 rupee notes as black wealth. Now, that also is really not the case. <clears throat> if you assume that this entire 3.6 lakh crore is being held by people who hold 10 crore rupees, then only you can say 36,000 people will be able to hold it. Okay. okay. Because 36,000 into 10 crores will become uh, 3.6 lakh crores. Right. So that's also not the case. And then we know that others also hold. So maybe three, 4,000 people hold it uh, in the form of cash at home for black wealth purposes, you know, and anyway, black wealth consists of many things. You know, just like white wealth consists of many things. You can have 
real estate, you can have bank balance, you can have shares, you can have debentures and so on. Similarly, black wealth is held in a variety of forms, including uh, <clears throat> under invoice inventory and your, you know, under invoice capital and various other things that you do. So therefore, you know, it's not that this uh, black wealth is all cash. Cash is less than 1% of the black wealth. So even if you could take out that 1% of the black wealth, 99% would remain. So and then, Professor Amar, then what are we achieving then? Uh, what is the motive behind the RBI's announcement? Then they say that, you know, a life, life cycle is four to five years, life cycle is over, therefore clean money policy, even that doesn't hold water. Because if you are saying that these are not really being circulated, then the life cycle will be 10 years rather than four to five years. Then it's right. not even a clean note policy. So in other words, you know, the logic I do not understand at all, because not going to take care of the black wealth, is not going to stop black income, is not going to stop terrorism, is not going to, uh, you know, stop, you know, the counterfeiting of currency. Uh, so what is the purpose? And anyway, the numbers are coming down. They were, they were, at the peak, they were about 6.5 lakh crore. Now they are 3.6 lakh crore. They are already almost half. So slowly they would have kept on decreasing. So I, I can only see a political purpose. The political purpose is that the government wants to say that we are taking care of black, you know, and the no, at the time of demonetization, the public thought that that was a step to take care of the black wealth of the rich people. Similar logic they'll try and give that, no, we are acting against black money and black money was being held. And you had the pictures of, you know, these people like the Bengal uh, uh, minister right. who got caught where, you know, a large amount of cash was caught recently also. You know, you had pictures of large amount of cash being caught, etc. So these pictures that they're addressing and the idea is that, you know, this Chalice person, ki sarkar, which is what the Karnatak uh, uh, Janta seem to have been swayed by. So they're probably trying to address that political question. Similarly, in demonetization also, they were addressing the political question rather than the economic question. Do you think that there will be scenes similar to what happened in 2016, specifically with reference to the smaller businesses? They really had a very tough time. Ordinary people had a tough time. Now the view seems to be that ordinary people might be spared of, you know, the, the suffering of standing in lines and, you know, some died in those lines. But will the small business suffer all over again? So you're absolutely right. You know, as I said, out of 30 crore families, one crore may be holding the 2000 rupee notes, but the rest 29 crore would not because, you know, in the unorganized sector, as the East Ham portal data tells us, 94% said they earn less than 10,000 rupees a month. If you're earning less than 10,000 or 20,000 rupees a month, you're not going to hold 2000 rupee notes. You know, you're not even going to use them for circulation. So it's the 1% families in the top echelons, top two, 3% would be having this kind of uh, currency in hand. So they may be going in line, but the others will not. However, there will be an indirect effect. The indirect effect is that the small traders, etc., if they find they don't have cash because they're not able to ch change their uh, money into 500 rupee notes easily, then what will happen is the businesses, the small businesses, the micro businesses, they will come to a standstill and they may not be able to pay salary, buy raw materials. So they may reduce their employment temporarily. This will be a temporary thing, but it will have an impact on the economy. Now, that will lower the income of those workers who get uh, uh, retrenched at this point of time. So the economic effect will be there because at the moment, you know, the small businesses, there are six crore plus small and uh, tiny businesses. The farmers who have to pay wages, etc. in the fields, you know, uh, they may uh, be affected. So employment may get affected. The economies uh, may get affected, you know, at the lower levels, not at the upper levels. Upper levels can uh, do with the electronic transactions and bank transactions, etc., on which there'll be no impact. Top 1% would be uh, standing in line or changing their currency. Uh, and the others will be indirectly affected because of the employment and the decline in GDP. So in a sense, there are two parallels with 2016. One, you will need a lot of political rhetoric, right or wrong, to cover up the impact of this. And two, the suffering will again be imposed on the smaller traders, the smaller companies, the smaller farmers, actually farmers of all kinds who want to uh, sell their crop and buy their uh, uh, supplies. So, so, then, so, so then even the last time there was an election, uh, a, a prominent election was there before demonetization. Now again... After the demonetization? Uh, yes. There was an important 
election coming in February. Right. So, uh, this time, the important election has just gone by. And three more elections are coming, right? Right. Uh, but I think the image, you see, the 40% Sarkara image, that needs to be dented. That we are active, we are proactive, uh, we want to uh, tackle black economy. And, you know, the image last time was that even though the rich did not suffer, they managed to convert their currency into new notes. Uh, they knew the bankers, they knew others, they paid uh, uh, money to uh, get the notes converted. Okay. So this time also the image would be that, okay, this is a step against the uh, corrupt and the black money, etc. And the public bought that image last time. Yes. It will not buy that image to the same extent, but it will be seen. Government can always say, look, we are doing this. And some of the BJP spokespersons who've come, they've given the same logic again about these notes as was being given about demonetization, saying that black money would be affected, terrorism would be affected, counterfeit currency would be affected. Whereas none of that happened then. And that is a much bigger step. This step is hardly going to dent any of that. I think it makes a difference that this time more time has been given. Will shopkeepers, traders simply stop accepting the notes right away? Absolutely. Absolutely. You are absolutely right. Right away, even though it will remain legal tender, but nobody is going to accept it. So circulation will stop immediately. And that's why I think there may be queues in the coming 10-15 uh, days. Uh, converting notes, etc. People will be in trouble. Small traders, etc. will not be able to carry out their business uh, that well uh, at this point of time, even though only 10% of the currency is being withdrawn. And uh, so, you know, it'll take time to replace this with new 500 rupee notes. But that kind of shortage that was there in uh, November 2016, that kind of shortage will not be there. But it seems from what you say that this is an unnecessary move. This will not serve any of the purposes that the politicians and spokesperson for the government are trying to convince people about and that there is evidently a political motive behind this move as in 2016. You think it's unnecessary? Absolutely. It is not necessary because it was already going down. It had already halved. And if you took more proactive steps to reduce it, you could have reduced it further and made it negligible part of your currency. You know, like, you know, if you remember in 1978, there's only 135 crores worth of the high denomination notes. And it, it was 0.6% of the total currency in circulation then. So th this number would have come down from 10% to 1% or less, would not have mattered at all. And as I said, at most two, three, four thousand people hold this in the form of black uh, wealth, which is not declared to the government. Right. Last question. You know, we compare this particular withdrawal of currency with the one in 2016. And then we say that, OK, this is 10 percent. That was 86 percent. So this is very mild. But if that hadn't happened, would 10 percent not be disruptive enough, bad enough a decision? No. So, you know, as I said, this uh, 2000 rupee currency note was not introduced to take care of demonetization. It was to improve transactions. That need will still remain because the small traders and businesses and the farmers, etc., would still need to hold cash because that's what they're used to. These are cultural practices. Right. And saying that less currency means less corruption is not true because in Japan, 18% of GDP, you know, the cash to GDP component is 18%. You know, in India, it's 13%. In Nigeria, it's 1.4%. In Sweden, it's 1.4%. So there's no direct correlation between how much cash is in the economy and how much corruption is there in the economy. You know, so it's a cultural practice. Is it the way you do business? That differs across countries. So you can't compare one country with another. You can't even change these practices very quickly. It takes time. So even though the government is attempting digitization and people are using more UPI and various other things, still the currency in circulation is going up. It's gone up from 18 lakh crore to about 35 lakh crore. The percentage of the economy, what was about 12%, has gone up rather than come down. So in other words, the digitization will take place slowly. Less cash economy will take place slowly. You can't push it. You have to change the cultural and the practices. What you require to do to check black income generation is to increase transparency, to increase accountability. You know, where every khomchawala on the pavement has to pay hafta, you know, uh, to the municipal authority, to the police. And, you know, there's lack of accountability in the political class. There's a lack of accountability in the bureaucracy. If you were to tackle that, black income generation would go, go down completely. You know, so we are barking up the wrong tree. You know, 10% of the currency going out of circulation. Is there an acceptable level of hardship uh, when, you know, when we discuss this kind of thing? I mean, 10% is a large number. 
<laughs> but the point is, you see, uh, currency, when it goes out, your velocity of circulation can increase. People are circulated more. So it's right. not just the amount of cash that you have or the amount of money, but how fast is it circulating? So the circulation can go up and take care of the 10% that uh, was not there. But given the cultural practices, et cetera, slowly the demand for 500 rupee notes would have increased. And maybe right. you have to increase the 1000 rupee notes also. You may have to introduce the 1000 rupee notes. You know, And some suggestions seem to be to introduce the 1000 rupee notes again. All right. So it looks like a very disruptive scenario where you're introducing and pulling out notes it seems like something that can cause a lot of instability. People will be unsure of what to expect next. Right, right. You're, you're right that there'll be uh, uncertainty. I'd say apart from instability, uncertainty. And whenever there's uncertainty, then people hold more cash. You know, so the demand for cash may increase even further, even though people may be scared that next 500 rupee notes may get uh, demonetized again, you know. So in spite of all, you know, there'll be a lot of confusion. Our direct tax GDP ratio, which should have shot up if black income generation is affected, remained at about 5.5% of the GDP. Slowly, it's gone up to 6%, but in between it had come down. So yeah. there's no uh, such evidence. Similarly, GST collection uh, means the indirect taxes. Indirect tax collection was around 10.5%. It remains around 10 percent 11%. So it's not that indirect tax collection went up. It's not that direct tax collection went up. So our tax GDP ratio did not change at all, which means that the black income generation has continued as before. Because if the black income generation comes down, then that would change. And that is because under GST, it is so complex that you have all kinds of black income generation, whether it be fake companies, shell companies, whether it be eBay bills and so on. And everything, you know, black incomes are being generated. Similarly, as the prime minister said, only 1.5 crore Indians are effective taxpayers. Mm -hmm. So out of 140 crore, so even though the number of people filing has gone up from, say, 5 crore to 8 crore, <clears throat> but also the number of people declaring nil income or very low income has gone up. <clears throat> it's not the number of people paying taxes that has gone up, you know. So therefore, we still have about 1.1% of the population which is effective taxpayers, whereas according to my estimate, about 5% should be effective taxpayers. So we haven't been able to make a dent on that, you know. Right, Professor Kumar, thank you very much for joining us. And that is all we have for today. We'll be following this and other stories on our website, newsclick.in, and on our YouTube channel, NewsClickIn. Keep watching NewsClick and give us a follow to stay up to date on the latest developments. Thank you again for watching.